Hi, I'm Paul Whiffin from AppSpace, and I thought it would be a great idea to start showing developers and contractors how to air seal a timber frame building. Uh, I've got with me Nathan Page from Paul & Page, one of our regular customers, and I thought it would be a great idea to really get involved in the build to give you a good understanding uh, what a VCL is, how to tape it, how to seal it. This is the VCL that you're looking at here. This is vapour open and airtight. So it's moisture out and stops the air getting through, keeping the air tightness. Basically what it is, is a membrane that goes around the whole entire of the house. And then what we do, we, we position 38 mil service button, fix it to the frame, keeps it pretty rigid, and also allows for service, such as electrical services and plumbing services to go down in between it. And then the plasterboard to be lapped over the top here, giving it a bit of a void. So nothing really penetrates the actual VCL. I think the next step is to show you where the timber frame contractor should leave the lapping joints to make your life easier. Otherwise, it's, it's an absolute nightmare to get the VCL applied. We've basically got the lapping joint here. This is the DPM that comes out under the screed. The cold bridging comes up. This is what we lap our VCL to. As you can see, the finished result this side, we lap it and stick it to it. This keeps like an airtight sort of barrier along the floor. Obviously the VCL runs up the wall. We've got then a bit of detail around the windows here. Some windows carry an EDPM, like a rubber membrane that comes around, which you lap to, creating a complete airtight barrier. This one here, we haven't got an EDPM, so we've actually carried the VCL past the window, fitted the window, putting the expandable foam around the outside. Uh, my advice is then to silicon this to create an airtight barrier and then you can position your plasterboard over the top and cork around the joints there, which acts as a secondary sort of air barrier. The next lapping joint that we've got here is a timber frame internal wall. You may also have a steel positioned in your build. Here it is. So they've applied this lapping joint so we can actually lap our timber frame up to it. Or when this goes in, we can actually lap our membrane, which you can see here, stuck to it. So it's continuous rather than stopping up to it and start on the other side. That means any air can come out of here or in the wall or any lights are fitted. So it needs to be continuous. So make sure when you get your steels put in, they do leave the lapping joint. Absolutely paramount for that to happen. So when your timber frame is built, ground floor panel is built, then your floor joists sit on top of it. Your first floor panels are then sitting on top of the floor joists. So you need continuous air barrier running around that void. The easiest way to explain it is with a couple of blocks of wood. So if that's your ground floor panel, your floor then sits on top of that. First floor panel then sits on top of the ground floor. So you need a piece of airtight barrier running around this void, which links up the ground floor VCL and the first floor VCL. Lots of times timber frame companies won't install this. They don't install it. You've then got a big void there where any, any air that goes through radiator pipes or down lights in the ground floor comes into the ceiling void and just leaks straight out the side of the ceiling. Okay, so basically what we're saying is exactly what Nathan said, it needs to be continuous around the side here. So basically any lights we stick in here, we get big problems with down lights, which we're probably about, I don't know, 15, 20 in here. This void here, if it's not sealed properly, you've got an absolute nightmare. Here it's absolutely paramount to get right. Right, we're upstairs. Um, I thought it'd be a good idea to talk about the dwarf walls. These are the small walls here. And also the lapping joint that Nathan just mentioned about downstairs that wraps around the uh, posi joist. Sit and left for us, can you see it here? This is how we've stuck our VCL to it and it carries up the wall. We've stopped here, because we're gonna show you what not to do, basically, which makes your life a lot more difficult. So what's happened here is the dwarf wall has been already installed, which making our life very difficult by carrying the VCL up the wall here to carry the VCL continuously around the whole of the roof. So this is now gonna be a pain in the ass. Obviously, we've also got to put the service baton. This won't necessarily need service baton, but you can see the gable wall here, that's already got it on. It is. So this is the VCL again, compressed to the wall. It'll be lapped and taped. We've also taped the actual joints on here, the actual uh, insulation that aids the air tightness as well. As you can see throughout, this all helps. Right, we're in the bathroom now, and this is, tends to be where all the problem seems to happen. Yeah, this is how a contractor's left the ventilation down here. It's all fun and games here for the chaps at Paul and Page. This needs to be insulated, sealed up properly. What I'd probably advise here to do, probably may have run another bit of insulation here and then run the VCL around the outside. To get a VCL in here, so it was an absolute pig. So probably well worth running the VCL around this dwarf wall in front of here, seal it, 
service baton in case you want to run any more pipe work through. Always got problems around service pipes and it's the soil pipe for the toilet. Now everybody seems to box it in and then tries and seals, seals up the end of the box. The VCL nice and tight and then plasterboard to it. Again, seal it and then seal it to the floor as well. And that'll keep it nice and tight. Anywhere where there's first fix electrics and plumbing tends to be the problem for air tightness. Right, one bit of detail I thought I'd also show you is in the kitchen. Paul and Paige has done here. They've decided to move the kitchen sink. It obviously makes sense to rather than it being here to be over the window. So when you're getting this pipe work here, that takes the waste away. The best way around it, because you've only got a 38 mil service baton, which is like a roofing baton. They've doubled up here so the plasterboard can run to the wall. There's always problems behind the sinks that carry the wastewater or where the water comes in. So we've addressed this problem basically with the VCL behind it all. Doubled up the service baton, which you can see here, which then when you put your plasterboard completely eliminates and hides all the pipe work, keeping it nice and airtight, nice and clean. You can see where the water's come up, nice and sealed all around here. This will be sealed with silicon. Again, doubled up the baton, so then the plasterboard can go over the top there. So just a quick tip, if you've got any big waste pipes, double up the batten. There is a small consequence to that, is that we have lost on this particular wall, 38 mil across the whole width of the wall, as we don't want to step in the plasterboard. Moving uh, sinks like this has cost us here. So really you want to make sure that you've got things in the right place. We're downstairs in the kitchen, just a little bit of insight, look. See, we've got, sometimes you can't help but to run cables outside. Must be an outside light. This needs to be sealed. You've just basically burst the bag, which is your airtight bag, which is the VCL. Make sure these are sealed, because once you've got your plasterboard on the wall, you don't want to mess around sealing up the plasterboard. So before you do cover it with plasterboard, please make sure that you go around and seal any penetrations that come through the VCL. Look, lovely one here as well for an outside light comes down the service baton, which it should do, a little gap here. This needs to be sealed and plugged. Obviously, we've got a best, nice bit of sterling board on the wall, so the kitchen cabinets get fixed to this, rather than penetrating the VCL. Any fixing points in the timber frame build, make sure you've got the OSB board that is there for all your uh, cupboards. You need to be fixed. You can see another one over there. That's it, I think, on this timber frame up to this sort of point. We'll come back to when it's been plasterboarded and uh, skimmed out and uh, plastered. So we'll come back again to show you what we can do if you've got past this stage to get you through an air tightness test. Just one other quick note, just make sure you have the right ventilation. If you've got a system one fan, which is intermittent fans that are in the bathrooms, which turn on and off with a light, you don't want this build to be too tight. You don't, if you're gonna get it super tight, make sure you've got a mechanical AMVHR or a system three, which is continuous. There's a bit of correlation between air tightness and the type of ventilation that you'll need. So just give you the heads up. Your designer or the guy who's carried out your sap calc should give you plenty of information on how tight your house should be and what type of ventilation to use. Okay, thank you.